Um, Good God, how much does nice. this There are an 85. There are 985. That's almost as equal as the. That's almost the same amount of anime episodes. Holy Christ. So the dude better get working if he wants to fix. The volume, I think it's like 95. I need to check. There, volume there's 95, 90, okay. there's 95 like separate volumes, but no, the like the main, the main volume count is like be, like anywhere between 979 Fucking to 985. Hell. So oh, like the okay. final tally of the episode, to like the to total volume of episodes would be like something along the lines of like fucking 1,200 episodes or volumes. Like this <laughs> is gonna be. <laughs> This is me Ooh. guesstimating on this one. I'm not gonna sit down and actually do the math. Listen, this is exactly what you need to do with with One Piece once it all comes out. You need to go to your local like like store that you buy your anime from. You need to get the box set of all the volumes. You need to take it home and then just throw it in the fucking trash. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Damn it. Same joke that I was gonna do. Finally, Jesus. Or dedicate 900 hours Yay. of your life to watching it. Dedicate 900 hours to my, of my life to watching it. Yeah, get fucked, Master Code. That's never happening. <laughs> we can spend, I will say, we can spend like three hours at a con watching like every night three hours just watching One Piece. And we'll get through it in like seven to six years. I mean, like, that would kind of be a beautiful story. Is like every year you guys meet up and watch a couple episodes of One Piece, watch Take a few hours seven. of that. Just you know. bashing our head, just bashing my head into the hotel mirror. Wait, is Duck Duck Pony in the um in the Twitch? Hmm. I think he is. Uh, I, I don't know. Who? Who's in the Twitch? Who? Duck tape. Uh, he's a dude I've seen like all over the uh, Brony community. Basically, his OC is blue, and I should you not, he's iconic for having his mouth taped. I know that guy. Yeah. Yes, he is. Duct tape pony is in the chat guy. right now. Yeah. No, I can never under like I. He's probably been asked this. Why does he have like? Why is his character's mouth taped? Please it, explain. Dude, just because. But like, I've spoken to the guy. It's thing. literally just because there is no rhyme or reason, and you will torment yourself searching for it. <laughs> well, duct it exists duct tape. Because, yes. Duct tape pony. I got a more. I got a more effective way of like keeping your mouth like complete like your lips sealed together in the perfect perpendicular line uh it's the same method that the dwarves used on loki all i need is a needle and thread oh oh, oh god all that right. dude that's painful moving on need... yeah moving on <laughs> yeah. that's the point that's the myth there is a like legitimately loki went to the dwarves and he was like hey guys i bet you guys can't make anything cooler than that like expanding boat that you made and the dwarves were like i bet you fucking ginger haired bitch and just started <laughs> making it so they made odin spear a golden boar that produced endless bacon and thor's fucking hammer and Loki bet his head on that, that they couldn't make incredible gifts. And so once all the other gods were like, yeah, no, these are fucking amazing. These are these are like the best things that they've ever made. The dwarves were like, okay, we get to take your head. And he's like, ah, bah, 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 bah. I said you could take my head, but I never said anything about my neck. And the dwarves were like, okay, fair enough. And then just sewed his mouth shut. <laughs> okay. I, well, I, at least I, he I, walked I, away with his head. This is the greatest thumbnail I've ever seen. Trust me, if I speak, if I speak in weird haikus, you really need to shut my mouth immediately. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Fair, fair, duct tape pone. I can respect that. I know. I respect a man who knows what he's about. Did you just one shot that snail? Uh, I guess. <laughs> how the? F how dare you, <laughs> fucking bully Turbo? <laughs> Snailed what? it. Well, all he wants to do is be the fastest snail. He wants to <laughs> race in the Indy 500 against Formula One cars. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Master Goat, did you literally say I snailed it? Maybe so that's a line from the movie. Yes, he did. That's yes, a line from the did. movie. That's a line from the movie. It's funny. Thanks. I'm never gonna is watch it, it. Is it funny? funny? No, it's funny. That's a terrible no, pun. Not. 
It's a horrible oh. pun. But it's got Snoop Dogg as a snail that probably smokes weed. Okay, it's now I really don't want to watch it. Yeah, and Beyonce is in the Lion King remake. You're Who not gives selling a shit? it. Yeah. It also has it also has Samuel L. Jackson as a fucking mentally unhinged snail, and that's my favorite I part of the movie. Don't you are not care. selling it. Listen, would it would it be okay? Would it be better if I said that Samuel L. Jackson does not say the n-word in this movie? <laughs> Why would he? he? Just, it's uh, in an animated DreamWorks film. He does not. In every film that's not like a PG-13 or something like that, he will use that word as no ad nauseum. Like, he, that's like his favorite word ever. You ever seen Django Unchained? No, but I've been meaning to. Just Samuel L. Jackson just screaming the N-word for the last 40 minutes of the movie. I've seen Django. I love yeah. at the end, like at the very end, where he's just like screaming profanities at fucking Jamie Foxx's character. I, I'll be honest with you, there was so much inward throws out in that film that I admit I thought my ears were gonna bleed. Yeah, you know why? Because it's about slavery in the South. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's the point. I know that's the point, but it's like, oh god. I saw like, if you I hated that, that again. if you hated that because that's supposed to be like an action comedy movie, you would absolutely hate the movie Twelve Years a Slave. Uh... That one. You would have a fucking conniption if you saw that movie. <laughs> Dear God, that movie is fucking disturbing. <laughs> I don't believe you! It's a great, it's a great movie, it's, but like, it, it is... The, <sighs> the dude wrote down that entire thing! It's a book! The dude wrote down his entire account! The fact he had to live through that shit for yeah. 12 years! God, yeah. he is a man! He is a god amongst men! Gotcha. I would crumple! All right. Like, anyway, moving on from slavery. Moving on from from <laughs> moving on to what obviously the fucking yaks do. Uh, the yaks are. If you're talking about friendship, is magic yaks. Um, oh God. Oh uh, Jesus. Nope. I'm gonna stop there. Yaks live in Yak Yakistan. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. What does that rhyme with? Pakistan. Guys, what? I just want to point out that we, in like three minutes, went from Turbo to 12 Years a Slave, and I'm so <laughs> proud of us. You act like this we is went from an new. animated movie about a snail wanting to race Formula One race cars to, think, have you heard of slavery? I think the best part <laughs> is that not many of us moved the conversation along. It was mostly Vlad who yeah. brought us from Turbo, who's introduced I Turbo. Introduce I... Turbo into the conversation, and then abandon Turbo to talk about 12 Years a Slave. Listen, man, you do not lightly talk about- you do not, like, not talk about 12 Years a Slave. That's a fantastic <laughs> film. You've got to talk about it. Jesus Christ. Alright, All right, again, moving on from slavery. What else are we going to talk yeah. about tonight? Uh, I am currently five. playing Ark, and I'm trying to find some wyverns. Uh, well, can I throw out a game suggestion for anybody out there? Well, it's technically three game suggestions. Sure, go ahead. Uh, the first game suggestion is probably one that a lot of people have played, and if you have not, uh, I highly suggest you do. It is, uh, Journey. I've play heard of it. What? Play Journey. Oh my god, play Journey. It is a fantastic game. It is- I've heard of it. I have never played a game that has told a story so fucking well without speaking a single goddamn word. He is right, right. Johnny is fucking amazing. Yeah. It is it is just the music, the fucking like environments, just everything about it is a beautiful tapestry of storytelling just wound together through pure silence. Just music and the ambience around you. Oh my god, I, I love that game so correct. much. So do you do you kill enemies or what do you do? No, it's literally just the story about uh, your character going on this pilgrimage, going from place to place, just walking, just traveling. So they get to you make choices, choices that you want to do whatever you want to do. 
Yes, you just yep. ex you just walk around environments and just figure out why this this person because it's not really a person because you've got no arms. It's just this humanoid entity with two legs in this very long scarf. So with Journey, you can have it any way you want. Oh my god! Oh my get god! Out. Oh my god! Get out! <laughs> You thank you, thank you. Oh, I, thank you. I was building up that show for the last two minutes. I was building up Master Code. Master Code. Shit. Oh my god, Master I am Code. so pissed. Hold on. Master Code, we are officially going separate ways. Oh. You're a bastard too, Golden Fox. <laughs> I'm talking about one of my favorite games. One of my favorite fucking video game experiences and you have to fuck it up with fucking journey hey you know what i'm gonna ruin it further you know how i've like i i said that like i've been meaning to play uh journey you want to know how i found out about journey the first time hmm. the, the guinness book of world records gamers edition 2013 you're a piece of shit really i was <laughs> i was also 12 okay uh Anyway, second game I suggest <laughs> is uh, Celeste. Oh god, it's on my list, and I need to play it so much. Celeste is a fantastic game that is one of the best ways to tackle mental illness that I have seen. It tackles the characters' like inner struggles, their mental illness, their depression, just in such a seamless way. It is... It's, it's so beautiful. Good. It looks it's so, so good. good. I need to play it. I just I need time. If I have That's time the thing. in the next year, I will play it. It's just one of those that I cannot. God damn it, Nelson! <laughs> what did Nelson say? <laughs> Whatever you do, don't stop believing. Journey is don't stop believing. <laughs> But like, yeah, I know. I heard that place. Well, we all know who's crying now. Like, yes, I know that Celeste is so good. I want to play Celeste. If he so rage badly. quits and leaves the call, he'll be all right without him. I just haven't played it because I haven't had time in the last year and a half to play it. Luckily, we're getting into the off season. That's <laughs> why I'm the keyboard. Able to play it. Uh, what's your uh, what's your third game? The third game is Gris. I don't know if I've heard of that one. I think or not. I've heard about that one, but I need to remind myself about it. Gris is another very it's another game that tells a story without speaking words. It is a platformer adventure game where you are this girl. The game starts off very very fucking strong with this amazing musical God score, and the whole thing is about dealing with painful experiences, facing the fears that we have inside of us, and finding the strength to overcome them. Yeah. There's now, can we... games that I just want to play, but I have no time anymore. Can we talk about just the fact that games a few years ago, like circa 2000, like 10, 2011, were Skyrim or Call of Duty, where it was big action, kill, to this fucking little girl in Celeste has depression and she is climbing a mountain in a almost suicidal attempt to kill herself, giving herself a basically impossible tax to get to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Like, fuck, I love where video games have gotten! Because I remember a point in history when people would say, video games are just for kids. Video games are art. Fuck you, Roger Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Woof. I, I loved Roger. Has some unresolved problems with Roger Ebert. I, I think you I got loved some Roger problems. Ebert. I love Roger. I loved Roger Ebert as a film critic because he was amazing. But he was so fucking wrong about video games not being art. He went on the record saying that video games are not art and could never be art. Yeah, he was. Well, he's full of shit. But he was also in that kind of. I mean, he was old by the time video games were in like the arcade. Were just like oh arcades. Like yeah, he was old. Piece of then. shit, boomer. He was by the time. Like, piece of shit, boomer. But by the time like, story-based games came around, like 
where they were really focusing on story. Yeah, he was like ancient. Comparison, yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree that Ebert was terrible at understanding why video games mattered. Because that because to him, and this is kind of a thing, to him video games are Pong. You know, that is or, you know, Donkey Kong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is something artful about those kind of games, but when you are a trained professional in understanding a specific form of art, yeah, it is harder to see something that people are like, oh, this is the next form of this art. And you can say, that does not, nope, that doesn't compute with how I view this kind of, I view this kind of art form. Because he is openly admitted that, like, he is a storyteller first. He believes that story is, oh, something broke. Uh, story is more important than like cinematography, which is something I agree with. I, I I am firm when it comes to film criticism. I view story as more important than you know how pretty a camera shot looks. Because if you can tell that story, because you can tell a story in a shot, I don't care if the color grading looks a little weirder on it or the acting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> terribly, really but acting is a acting is a barrier to telling a story. Like, bad acting can hinder a story, but, like, I think people get- people have a fundamental hang-up when it comes to movies, where it's like, oh, I recognize a thing, therefore, if this thing does not, you know, is not perfect in this element, thing is bad. It's like, you know, cinematography- I, I remember- it was something about, like, I don't remember what movie, it's like, this shot isn't great. I'm like, no, this shot is actually really- You cutting huh. out there. It's more focused on telling the story rather than being, you know, pretty. That's my yes. rant out of the way. Yes. Mm. I also, th this is just something that I like about Gris, is that it starts off like the world is completely colorless and gray, and Gris is, I do believe it's the Spanish word for gray. I believe you're correct. Which I... I just, I was like, fucking good. That's nice. I fucking like that. This is good that shit. That is a pretty clever, that is a pretty clever method of wordplay. Bash yeah. my head in the fucking desk. And like, throughout the entire game, you're just restoring color to the world. And like, I'm not going to spoil any of like the big, like any of the story from there, but it's like, it's just the girl's journey of overcoming like pain and sorrow and like horrible ex experiences and just rising above them. And it's it's beautiful. It is a beautifully yeah. told story just through music and art direction. And it's so good. I love it. Uh I, I need to play more game games. Is just Same having that realization. I just I um, don't have time anymore. That's hey, yeah, uh, that's the thing with me. Guys, yeah. hold on a second. What's up? I was gonna say, like uh, Vlad, you got a question from Desert Samurai earlier. He asked Ooh, what? if you've played o he asked if you've Okami. played Okami. I have played Okami, and I fucking love Okami. Yay! Not alone. only, not only for the fact that like I love Japanese mythology and stuff like that. I love, Same. I love Japanese mythology. I've been in love with it since I was a little kid. Um, I love the story that it tells. I love like the oh. the art direction in the story. The art direction in, in the game is just a absolutely beautiful. The soundtrack is fucking like incredible. Oh uh, yes. I could fall There's... asleep in that soundtrack. <laughs> the thing that pissed me off the most was I used to have a a uh, like a like a statuette of uh, Amaterasu from uh, Okami, and it got broken when my uh, my childhood home flooded the first time. And I have not been able to find another one that's like oh. within my price point. So oh, I've been supremely angry at my hometown's borough because they try to say that the flood isn't their fault even though it is their fault and we have fucking documentation that it's their fault but it's oh, all okay have now you, have you played the follow-up to the game the the one with the on the ds oh come in yes i love that game it's so cute but it's so sad it has a lot of feels yeah I just like I've comparison been... to the two. Like comparison to the two, Okami Den had a lot more emotional feel 
onto it than comparison to the first one. Which that says a lot, because the first one was amazing and it had a lot of emotional moments. But Okami Den I agree. put it to a whole nother level because I cried at the end. I did! I bawled at the end! It killed it got me that hard. I think that the problem I end up having with games is like my backlog of things that I need to watch is like because I have a Google Doc. I've had it for like five years, and I just put things that I hear that are really good, and I'll just put them on the list. It's like, okay, I need to get around to watching this. And the problem is that document is three pages long of just movies and TV shows I need to catch up on. Yeah. If I start adding games, oh my god. Like, I, I have an Epic Game Store account where it's just games that I get for free, and there's so many games on there that I'm like, that looks ah. so much fun. I need to play this. I'll get around to it at some point. Yeah, there's one set of games that I've been trying to get through. I haven't even finished the first one yet, but I've been meaning to finish it for three years now. And it's the Banner Saga trilogy. Yeah. Oh! I've heard that's really good. It is a fantastic strategy game, like turn-based strategy game. It is absolutely amazing with very real consequences. Like a, a character in the game, like at the very beginning, a character that you would, like, becomes very, like, useful in the game later, he can die in the very beginning of the game, and you will never see him again. He just I dies. Okay, I um... restarted the game four times to make sure that he survived. Gun orb? Oh. Uh, this is interesting. What orb did you get? A gun orb. An orb that imitates gun? a standard issue Empire handgun. It's an Ooh. orb gun. Orb gun! Oh, uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, oh, sorry. Renaki has shown a length of, if the, of the actual figure, if this is the figure you're talking about, and they're wondering if this is in your price range or not. It's in the, uh... This yeah. is most definitely in my price range right now, but back when I was a fucking high school student, $120 was not something I could do. It's understandable. <laughs> but now I can, because I'm a big adult, and I work at a radio station, and I get paid oh, big nice. money. This feels like a so I can't bag afford now. this. This is mine! <laughs> Plasma full bag.